Hello everyone, my name is Mansoor and I am a Site Reliability Engineer and I am here to teach you DevOps. So what is this series all about? Simply speaking, this is about uh, building a framework on how to become a DevOps Engineer, starting from scratch. Uh, this series does not expect you to have any experience before, uh, of course, although it is you know good to have. Who is this series for? Honestly speaking, I don't think it's me who should be answering this question. Uh, towards the end of this video, I'll be showing you a roadmap I have planned. Take a look at it and decide for yourself if this is going to be useful for you or not. So before I get started, I want to uh, make this disclaimer. If you are a complete beginner and you do not understand what I am talking about in this video, I'm talking about this video only then don't worry about it at all i'm only talking about this only for people who already know about this and who have been in the field for a while and they just want to get their basics uh, straight or they just want to follow along for whatever reason so do not worry this is going to this series is going to be a basic one and uh, we will be touching all the bases so why am i making this video so DevOps is a very new term and because of that there are a lot of confusion surrounding it. Everyone have their own definition of DevOps. For comparison, if you want to become a front-end engineer, you start with HTML, CSS and then you move on to JavaScript and once you have a good foundation on this, it's easy to find a job that way. On the other hand, with DevOps things are a lot more complicated. This is because DevOps spans multiple fields like system administration, operations, software engineering, database administration, etc. And it differs for each organization. So as a DevOps engineer, you are expected to have a decent knowledge in many different fields. This is why it's so difficult for beginners to get started. Most people don't know where to get started. So my aim is to give a framework on getting started as a DevOps engineer. So what is DevOps? Simply saying a way of doing things that has automation in every aspect of it. To be able to actually make sense of that, we need to go before that. What was before DevOps? So what is before DevOps? Well, there were no DevOps then means there were developers and operations. There were developers who write code. There are operations people who manage the servers. Okay, this is our server. This is where our website lives, let's say for example. Developers write code and they just pass it along to the operations people. They take the code and do whatever it's needed, add the configurations, uh, like you no, know, make it production ready and just copy it to the servers. So this is what used to happen before. What is wrong with this? Well, developers want root access and operations people don't want to give that to them. I I'm just kidding, of course. <laughs> Although this is true for a lot of cases. So developers write the code and operations people manage the infrastructure and developers wants to get their code onto the servers as quickly as possible. Operations people like to take, take things as slow as possible and why is that? Because change is bad for the systems. So what is wrong with this? The problem happens when uh, a developer is like you know, hey mate can you copy this code to the server? Then operations person is like you know, Nah mate, I don't feel so good right now, My next Wednesday or something. Although I'm joking, the idea is similar. Like there were a lot of frictions between the developers and the operations people. There is this thick wall of fire. So what DevOps does is DevOps uh, tries to destroy this wall of fire, this, this wall of fire and build a bridge between these two teams. In this way, the developers will be able to get their code directly onto the production without having to go through a middleman. So the DevOps people makes that happen. They build this bridge. That's the simple, that's the simplest way to put things. This way, the developer is able to get their code directly onto the servers without having to go through a middleman. And this makes things so much faster and there is no friction between these two teams. So now that we talked about uh, what DevOps is and what was there before DevOps, Let's move on to some of these misconceptions about DevOps itself. So one of the most prominent one among the list is I don't need to learn Linux. This is the most ridiculous argument I have ever heard. Of course you have to learn Linux. You have to know the basics of Linux. You need to know, you need to have a very good grasp of the Linux operating system concepts. 
like you know basic commands tools etc because the whole system that you're going to build is going to run on a linux machine and another one is devops means build and release engineer or devops means jenkins this is not true jenkins is yet another tool Jenkins is just one part of the whole tool chain that lets you do the uh, lets you adopt the DevOps culture. And when you start with DevOps, you should not start with Docker or AWS or Google Cloud or Azure or Kubernetes or Jenkins. I mean, obviously, you can start with any of this if you know what you're doing. Basically, what I mean by that is if you have been working as a system administrator or if you know your way around the Linux system, your managed systems before, then of course, go right ahead. It makes total sense. But if you are a total beginner and you have no idea about any of these things I talked about in the uh, previously, starting right at any of this, any of this listed here makes absolutely no sense. You have no context of what you're doing. You don't know why you're doing something like when you're doing when you're using uh, when you're using a container versus a virtual machine you don't know what to use when because you have no context uh, how is this different from all the other videos out there well simply speaking this is not about learning a, a tool a devops tool or like a single tool it's about building that context building that framework on on top of which you are you're gonna add more tools, more skill sets, uh, more languages, etc. on top of it. So my goal is to build that framework, that basement. That's that's what we're gonna do. Another thing is context-based learning. What I mean by that is we're gonna learn things as we need them. For example, we need to host a website. For that, we need a web server. We're gonna learn about web servers then. We need to have a domain name pointed to our website. We're going to learn about DNS and domain registrars, etc. Then. So this is what I mean by context based learning. And in my opinion, one of the advantage of doing that is, you know, exactly why you are doing a specific thing. And because of that, this helps you understand the concept so much easier. Without having a context, if you were to learn Docker, you don't know what kind of problems you are trying to solve. So yeah, context-based learning is a very good way to learn anything new that gives you much more context and it gives you, it makes you understand the concepts so much easier. And uh, with this series, we're going to be touching all the basics that are that are absolutely needed this is in my opinion this could be completely wrong uh, you could have a different opinion on that that's totally fine but this is what i think uh, you absolutely need the first step of doing devops is not doing devops i mean this doesn't make sense i know but hear me out uh, my point is before we actually get into that we need to be able to have a context again the word context comes here on what exactly is DevOps trying to solve. And another interesting thing that I have always thought about, especially when interviewing candidates, is this lack of big picture. The big picture is about having this idea of what to Google for, like as simple as that. If you know what to Google for, for example, you know that you need a monitoring system, or you know that you need a backup system, or you know that you need a logging system. This is what I mean by big picture. This is not about knowing all the tools out there, but this is about knowing what you need. How is this series structured? I have made a roadmap of the things that I will be planning to cover. This is not a final version. I just made it and uh, this is what I think at this moment. It could change at any point. It could change based on the feedback I get or it could change based on what you know i think differently at that point in time so here is this roadmap that uh, i just prepared so we're going to start with like a uh, very basic stuff like you know how does a simple website work then we're going to talk about like uh, basics of a web server and uh, basics of dns this is like you know we're not going to do go deep into it yet at this point 
then uh, we're gonna move a bit into basics of Linux. Uh, this is uh, this is what I have in my mind. As I said before, like context-based learning, we're gonna learn Linux by doing something, by having a goal in our mind. Our goal at this moment would be to have a website up and running, and we're gonna learn Linux in the process of doing so. We're gonna set up a virtual machine, we're gonna learn about virtual box and virtualization, and we're gonna install a uh, Ubuntu server, then we're gonna do some like SSH and basic stuff, like basic uh, IP address ports and all kind of stuff. And from that, we're gonna move on to, you know, getting your website ready onto the internet, and we're gonna learn about domains, domain names, systems, uh, buying a domain, then we're gonna move on to more complicated web applications like WordPress and uh, you know application servers, database servers, etc. And then we're gonna move on to learning about version control, like you know why we need version control and all kind of stuff. And then we're gonna move on to configuration management. When we are reaching at this point, for example, we have set up a, a, a web server and an application server and a database server, everything, and we have a WordPress system running then now we know kind of need for the configuration management. I started my career as a system administrator and um, at that point when I heard about the term puppet or configuration management, it didn't make sense to me. I didn't understand what it was trying to solve. But only after reaching a point where I actually saw the problem myself that I was able to understand the, pro uh, the solution that we are presented with. So that's why I'm, I'm going this way of context-based learning. After the configuration management tool, we're gonna move on to a simple Node.js application and we're gonna build end-to-end -end pipelines for that. Basically, we, we're gonna build an infrastructure where you push the code to your repository and it's gonna get deployed onto the, to the server that it's running. Then we're gonna move on to monitoring of your systems, like you know, basic white box monitoring or black box monitoring, uh, depending on what I'm uh, but I will be preparing for it at that moment and uh, we're gonna get more we're gonna go more in detail about caching uh, HTTP protocol and uh, caching servers etc and then we're gonna move on to some security stuff like firewall basic network security and things like that then we're gonna learn something about backups and uh, then at this point we have a good decent amount of knowledge about managing a system in a virtual machine then we're gonna evolve into docker at this point we know the problems that we are solving with docker and then we're gonna learn about containers and uh, uh, you know getting our own docker images and moving our whole websites that we built in the past into docker and from there we're gonna move on to kubernetes and uh, from there we're gonna move on to uh, better monitoring and then we're gonna move on to Google Cloud AWS or etc So like you know, this is by no means a final draft This is just an idea just an outline of what I have in my mind. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments I will be starting on the next video as soon as possible This is it for now. Let me know what you think. What should I add? Should I remove anything? Should I change any of this structure? Any feedback on it? Just let me know in the comments and I'll address them so yeah, that's it for now. See you in the next one.